This is Striker Avenue, and this is What's It Like? So, this is where I basically give you an idea of a new game that just came out. It's not a review, uh, obviously it's not a preview because the game already came out. I basically just take a look at uh, the first several hours of a game or so, uh, depending on the size of the game, and then I give you an idea of what it's like. So, we have Hitman, and dear god, this is a friggin' mess. Now, I love the Hitman series, and we're going to get into it, don't worry. Um, but yeah, they Square Enix has divided this game up into uh, a starter pack that barely gives you anything, and uh, with promised content for the next four months, uh, with one piece of content basically coming out each month. So yeah, let's, uh, let's get down to it. So the first thing is uh, this is not a glitch. This is this is you trying to connect to their servers. Now, a lot of this game is online only, which doesn't make sense in a Hitman game. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean uh, that you can't connect to the internet. It's that you can't connect to their internet when they're online. If you can't connect online, um, you don't get much. Uh, you get, obviously, the missions themselves, uh, that's the story. All the contract stuff is completely void. You can't do anything with contracts, it's all online. You can't do the tutorial, you can't do anything. You can't do any challenges, you don't get credit for challenges, and they don't go toward your mastery for that particular mission. Every mission has uh, certain levels that you can earn, and and you get rewards for them, like you get different, uh, not different disguises, but you get different starting locations and uh, different uh, smuggled items you can have. If you do any of this stuff and you're not connected to their servers, it does not count. So, what do you get in Hitman? Uh, no semicolon, no nothing. So, what you get is... Uh, I went through it in an hour and a half. Uh, seriously, I mean... If you played the beta, you basically got, you know, the ICA facility stuff. You know, uh, this is what you get. You get a rival, you get a cinematic, then you get the guided tour, another cinematic. Then you got the ship thing, another cinematic. Uh, then you got the final test, that's the, the jet plane, the guy that plays chess. Another cinematic, and then you got uh, Showstopper. Now, the showstopper thing is what you've seen before. Now, when you go to contracts mode, this is all the different contracts uh, that other players have set up. Uh, when you go into challenges, uh, you can see the challenges for each one. And you actually get credit for doing all these different things. And this actually increases your level in that particular mission. The higher your level, the more stuff uh, you can bring with you and the more options and stuff you kind of get. And under Mastery, well, this is like, uh, you get different starting locations, you get different weapons, you get different agency pickups and whatnot. All of this stuff, as you can see, your Mastery level, I believe, is uh, it's 20 levels per mission. So as you do these things, they will get checked off, and you will get more stuff to play around with, like the remote explosives. You don't get that right away. You gotta beat the mission first, and then you can come back and, and play around with some cool stuff. You also get the Paris mission, and that's it. Um, you just saw all the content you basically get. Uh, you get the stuff from the beta, which is the same mission repeated twice, the very, you know, your training stuff. Uh, you get, um, the Jasper Kid mission, uh, which you also saw in the beta, and which is also what you're seeing right here. Uh, so you get this as well. well. Again, this is part of training, so everything is, it's, it really does play out like it is an actual mission, aside from the fake facade of, you know, everything being wooden. Uh, and then you get the Showstopper mission, which is the only actual mission uh, you know, where you, where it's actually real life happening. You know, all this stuff is just, this is part of your training, this whole setup here. But it does give you a pretty good idea what the game is going to be like. So, let me get into the disappointing part of it later. But, I mean, as far as a Hitman game goes, now I've played, I played Blood Money and I got, you know, the full thousand for that when uh, I was totally excited. 
uh, when Absolution was coming out, I got my full thousand for that. It was a bit different. That was was more story driven. This is definitely more back to the roots of the Hitman franchise, where you have multiple disguises. You can bring in agency stuff with you. In Absolution, you'll remember that Hitman actually was on the outs of the company, so he didn't have supplies and stuff set up for him ahead of time. All strapped in. So, <laughs> this is a kind of a funny moment. I don't understand how this actually works in a... Uh, you know, and uh, this isn't real scenario because we see the guy get rocketed up to the sky and he's presumably dead, right? But whatever, it's a fantasy. But the mechanics work really well. There's different disguises. The disguises can be used in different locations. The, uh, yeah, that part's great. Um, the enemies, the enemies are actually probably the easiest they've ever been in any Hitman game. Uh, you don't... Well, I mean, it might still be in the game, but you don't necessarily have a, a threat detection meter uh, anymore, or a suspicion meter, I should say. It, it depends. You see that mechanical solutions? If you're offline, uh, that doesn't pop up, and neither does flying colors, you know, when you do stuff, because technically you're not getting credit for it. I played the first hour and a half when the servers were completely down for the game, so that counted for nothing. Nothing I did... Uh, counted for anything aside from an achievements that I unlocked doing specific stuff. So, yeah, it doesn't make sense. But anyway, back to the mechanics. The mechanics are okay. Um, you know, the visuals are pretty good. This is supposed to be an early career thing. Um, you know, vaulting. Everything works pretty good, and it looks pretty good. Um, it, it possibly doesn't have quite the sheen that Absolution did, or it seemed like it did, but... Eh, you know, it is what it is. Even though this is next-gen. But, yeah, so the mechanics and stuff work out. Uh, the Paris mission, like I said, is the actual only real mission in the game. Um, and it looks pretty good. Um, it's really not too bad. But, uh, you know, and you got lots of people in there. This one has, uh, I think there's like four floors. There's a wine cellar. There's so much detail. Like, that's where you got to go in order to get the security tape if you get spotted on the footage. Um, you know, it's really extravagant, you know, this is, if this is a, a predecessor to what we're going to see in the future stuff, this is all really cool. Uh, it really is. Uh, the only bad thing is the fact that, well, if you've been watching a lot of the online stuff or the YouTube stuff, the developers have showed off this exact mission before. So you've probably seen a couple of different playthroughs of this. Um, you know, probably at least a good 20 or 30 minutes worth of footage already. And like I said, uh, even if you didn't have access to the PlayStation 4 beta, um, you probably watched some other people have access to it that displayed the Jasper Knight mission and the boat mission, which was repeated twice, of course. Uh, so you're not going to see anything new uh, aside from the cutscenes. And this is basically it. So... But, I mean, yeah, you know, the there's lots of people, there's lots of stuff to interact with. As you can see, there's really no suspicion meter. Um, and you can actually bump into guards when you have, like, the right costume. I don't think I have the right costume in certain areas, of course. But, you know, you can actually bump into the guards, you can bump into your, your main target, uh, and they won't even do anything about you. Before, you couldn't do that in a Hitman game. Uh, you know, Blood Money had, you know, some refinements of its own. It was very rare where you would get Man, I wish the right I costume it. that would work for everybody. Because, I mean, if you had a bodyguard outfit, if you got too close to other bodyguards and you stayed too close for too long, you know, they would actually sniff you out. Uh, but here, that doesn't happen. It actually is probably the easiest Hitman game around. Uh, not that you could necessarily shoot everybody or shoot your way out like you used to but anyway is it worth it so oh dear god what they've done is they've they've created a starter pack for hitman now the bad thing is is that this this was going to be you know the it's a full game it was going to be a full game 
they were going to give us a full game. Uh, the developers even said that, yes, you're going to get the full game for the $60, and then there was going to be additional content that was going to be sprinkled out to you, and additional levels were going to be added, and, and so much more after the game was going to come out. And then Square Enix decided to chop it up. And so basically all you get now is a starter pack, which is the content that I've told you that you get. Uh, I'm not going to go through it again, just because I'm running out of time here. Um, you know, the, the few missions that you get. Uh, this cinematic is kind of cool. It alludes to some of the previous stuff you've done in the previous Hitman games. Um, so that's kind of cool if they're going to redress some of those up. Uh, but then all you get is Paris, and that's it. Like I said, I literally went through it in an hour and a half. Uh, and I was starving for more content. Uh, I couldn't connect online to their servers at that point, uh, just because their servers weren't working the first day or two the game came out. So, you know, yeah, it's it's fifteen dollars, and this is what you get. Any other game on Xbox Live or Arcade or whatever you want to call it, uh, that's a pretty abysmal, you know, in itself. Sure. You could still get like three hours, but we're we're talking about you know, you know levels of uh, Phantom Pain here, Metal Gear Solid Five, uh, you know that first part sequence. So, uh, you know it's it's really hard. You know that was thirty dollars, and you basically got like an hour worth of gameplay with a lot of added stuff. This you don't get much, and we're supposedly promised another mission in April, another one. Uh, a month after that, another one a month after that, and then another one, you know, so we're supposed to be getting like one location each month for the next four months, but, you know, I mean, for Paris, all we got was Showstopper, that was it, that was all that came with it, so I'm really disappointed, uh, I'll probably do another What's It Like after all the content is up, because it's really not fair reviewing the game at this point, because this is not a complete game. And, you know, me being a Hitman fan, I loved playing through, you know, and then going back, you know, and repeating some stuff. But with this, you have to be repeating stuff because you're not going to get much enjoyment. Um, so, yeah, that's what they're doing with the Hitman franchise. I'll see you in part two uh, to let you know if some things change, but just be wary right now.